that as coming from a specific person and him as a person saying it, then it doesn't make so, a lot of sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's a biggie right there, the personification. I mean, we're, you know, I know I'm continuing to go over that and over that, you know, because to tell you the truth, there's some people I'd like to personify. You know, I'd like them to be real. <laughs> you know, so it's a matter of really seeing that all bodies are a projection of my mind, behaviors are a projection of my mind, you know. And, um, and what I see is a projection of my mind. So those bodies we want to hang on to as special are just projections of our mind. We already have them in our mind. But that's it. Yeah. That's a topic. Well, what were you, are you more consuming of that Tom who died, that you felt a presence there as though it was something separate? It wasn't everything that you were experiencing there. It was an image or persona of well, it wasn't an image or a persona. It was it was just a, like a pervasive presence. But even that, it was just a symbol. It was my mind using a symbol that was meaningful to me at the time. And it and it wasn't Tom. It wasn't Tom per se as a person, Tom. But it was just this presence. Does that? Make sense? Even the thing about you mentioned like feeling a presence on your shoulders, yeah. that would be a symbol. Mm -hmm. Like when some people see Very close. the Virgin Mary or the Madonna up here or um, feeling of like being en engulfed or embraced by arms, sometimes people have talked about those would be symbols again. Mm -hmm. That the Holy Spirit is, is using those symbols. For the mind, so this can relate to that. Something we understand. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but if we're all one mind, why wouldn't you feel that presence? Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All the time. And see, that's the thing. Again, that's why it's symbolic. It was nothing about Tom's body dying that made his presence available to me. That doesn't, wouldn't make a bit of sense. And it doesn't make any sense to me. So again, it was just symbolic for me because of I had always had this belief and, and ideas about what death of the body meant. And so for me it was just a, and it, I, I think what it symbolized for me was a much more expansive view. It was like pulling it way back and looking at it from a whole other realm of what was going on. But it was still symbolic. Did you feel as though, okay, his mind was somewhere. I felt his mind with me, with and you. And I felt it. He felt, no, that was in the present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was no separation between his mind and his. Yeah. Yeah. His mind felt in my mind, I guess is how you, I could say it. And so you could. Because I felt like there would be that with everybody you know. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <coughs> or not die. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that and that's the joy you experience when you say, this is so marvelous, and you feel that connectedness and, and don't feel any separation with another mind. Yeah. I mean, that's what I got. Like yeah. there are no separate minds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. mind. And, you know, yeah. And when, when you were talking to me, Rebecca, too, about that experience you had with what seemed to be Jesus at one time, where you were good. Yeah. indescribable. Yeah. It was felt like you were going to just explode with with joy and everything. It, it can seem very, very overwhelming, yeah. but that's that's the experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my knowing. That this is real. <laughs> yeah. So even the light episodes, and you probably said this, I don't remember when we were talking about it just before, or talked about in lesson 15. That too is symbolic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Again, it's, it's, anything that involves yeah. perception mm -hmm. is, is symbolic. Yeah, there's a passage that I have been reading, and, it, and I was thinking about this last night when we watched the movie, and when, I, when I was reacting, you know, to the beating and the death. And it's the fourth obstacle to peace, the fear of God. And it's on page 391 in the old text. It's so, one of the obstacles to peace. 
section, the fourth obstacle. Okay, it's chapter 19, yes, and it's uh, section 4, and within that section, it's under which one? The four, the fourth obstacle. The, the fear of God. God. And it says, what would you see without the fear of death? What would you feel and think if death held no attraction for you? Very simply, you would remember your father, the creator of life, the source of everything that lives, the father of the universe and the universe of universes and of everything that lies even beyond them would you remember. And as this memory rises in your mind, peace must still surmount a final obstacle, after which is salvation completed and the Son of God entirely restored to sanity. For here your world does end. And then again it goes on to say that it's the fourth obstacle to be surmounted hangs like a heavy veil before the face of Christ. Yet as his face rises beyond it, shining with joy because he is in his Father's love, peace will lightly brush the veil aside and run to meet him and to join with him at last. For this dark veil which seems to make the face of Christ himself like to a leper's, and the bright rays of his Father's love that light his face with glory appear as streams of blood, fades in the blazing light beyond it when the fear of death is gone. And this is the darkest veil, upheld by the belief in death and protected by its attraction. Um, what I was... That hit me because I was thinking about how, how this movie last night, the reaction would come from a fear of death. The reaction to uh, any fear ultimately is a fear of loss of some kind, and the ultimate loss is a fear of death. 